Hi, in this video I will show you how to get from this to this. I will show you every step of the MJET certified build so that if you decide to get the files you will be able to follow my steps and build the pump easily. The MJET 35 consists of some 3D printed parts, some fasteners, some hardware you will need to buy, some custom parts you will need to order and some simple handmade parts. This part list is available in the description. So let's start the build. I will start the build by making the handmade parts and I will do the drive shaft and the steering shaft first. These two parts are made from a 5mm stainless steel rod. Now I will use a drill press and a file to smooth out the edges which I have just cut. Ok, so we have our shafts ready and the thing which I need to do now is to check if my bearing fits the drive shaft. And this is this is okay. This is how it should look like. But it might happen to you that the drive shaft will be too thick and won't fit the bearing. And in, the, in that case, you would need to take a drill and a sandpaper and sand the shaft a little bit to make it smaller for the bearing to fit properly. The next thing I need to do is to file these flat spots on the shaft uh, in order to transfer torque to the impeller and so on. Now let's do the drive shift first and I need to file this 15mm plate down to 3.8. Three point eight. Okay. And the other side goes down to four millimeters. And this is four point one, this is okay. And now let's do the steering shaft. And we need to send this one down to three point five. And here just make sure you make the flat spot on the same side as before. I will finish these two parts by doing some small sanding to the edges. And we have our finished drive shaft and steering shaft. I will continue by making the two motor pins and the steering pin. They are cut from a 3mm stainless steel shaft. The next part I will do is the water cooling tube. I will cut two of these from a 4x3 brass pipe. And there we have our water cooling tubes finished. Now I will move on and create the aluminum right plate. You can either get this shape laser cut or you can cut it from a 40 by 2 mm aluminum profile and this is quite easy I will show you how I do it. So at first measure 75 mm length. Now I will measure 20 to get a center line. And I will also cut a chamfer in the corners. Now I will mark the position of the holes for the screws and this is 5.5 mm from the back and then from there 20 mm. And I will use a 3.5 mm bit to cut these. And I will finish these holes with a 6 mm drill bit to 
do a slot for the flathead screws. One more important step before you can bend the right plate is to heat it up to anneal it and make the bending easier. So I will use a torch for this and that then let the aluminum plate slowly cool down. After the right plate cools down, you can finally make the bends on it. To do that, I have designed and 3D printed a bending tool, which works like this. You put it into a vise and you make the 45 degree bend. It is designed so that you put the aluminum right plate li right onto it. You don't leave any gap right here and the bend will be correct. Keep in mind to put the screw slots facing towards this part. And clamp it all the way down. And there we go. We have our bands finished. And this is our finished right plate. Now let's talk about the impeller a little bit. This is my aluminum impeller 3D printed using selective laser melting in aluminum by PCBY. And this is the preferred option you should go for if you decide to get yourself the MJ35. You can also use any other company which does metal 3D printing and you can either choose stainless steel or aluminum. In my opinion aluminum is better because it is not that much less durable but it is a lot lighter which is advantage for lower vibration and also of, of course lower weight of the pump overall. And also it is easier for the motor to spin the impeller when it's lighter. The important thing is if you order these impellers uh, and there is an option with infill, you need to choose 100% infill of the part because otherwise the counterweight would not be heavy enough and it wouldn't work properly. With the MJ35 you will also get a file uh, with the impeller designed to be printed in plastic as you print usually uh, and that's not a very good option but it will work for some quick testing. Now there are two important things you need to do after you get the impeller to make sure it will work. The first thing you need to check after getting the impeller is the overall length of it. Because in some processes like metal 3D printing it can happen that the impeller expands a little bit after the manufacturing. So you can see that my, my impeller is 93.5. It should be 93.4. This is still okay, but if it was like 0.3 millimeters bigger than it should be, then you need to take a file and send this part down a little bit. The second thing you need to check is if the impeller fits on the shaft. And in this case, the impeller slides right on it. And you can see it moves freely along it. If your impeller gets stuck on the shaft, you should check the flat spot right here if it is big enough and long enough. The last special part you need to get is the intake grate. You can also 3D print this, but the durability will be much worse. I got my intake grate manufactured by laser cutting from 2mm stainless steel and this is the best option you can do. This is my intake grade straight from the manufacturer and you can see the quality is pretty good although the price was quite low. And I just need to finish this by drilling the slots for the flathead screws right here. And now we finally have all our hardware finished and ready to start the assembly. So let's do it. At first print the parts. I am using carbon fiber polycarbonate for this and this is probably the best material you can choose. But you can also use any other material like PLA, PETG or ABS. Keep in mind that the tolerances on the parts are optimized for carbon fiber polycarbonate. So if you choose a different material you might have to send some areas for the parts to fit, but not a big problem. Also you can try tweaking the extrusion factor. The housing, second stage. First stage, steering nozzle, servo coupler, steering crank, the motor mount and the bearing cap. So before the assembly I will just clean the printed parts a little bit.
So let's start the assembly. The first step is to take 14 threaded brass inserts and a soldering iron. We will start with the housing. We will insert 4 inserts into the rear part of the housing, 1 insert into the grease port slot, 2 inserts for the motor mount, 1 insert into the bearing cap area, and two inserts to hold the intake grate. Keep in mind the inserts which go into the motor mount slot are slightly angled, so don't try to put them in straight. Now let's take our second stage and put one insert into the grease port slot. Now the first stage. And the last insert goes into the servo coupler. Now let's take the housing again and prepare our two water cooling tubes. I will use a 5 minute epoxy to glue them in. All the way in. Okay, after the epoxy cures, the next step is to take these two FPM rotary shaft seals. You need the FPM type because otherwise the shaft seal might melt on the shaft because of high speed. The FPM type is more temperature resistant and therefore will not cause any problems. Also, the advantage of this type is that the, the spring inside of the seal is stainless. You press one of the seals into this slot and you will need to use a vise to press it inside. And you press it down. Okay, now the second one. It goes right here. Okay, so we have our seals ready and now the main bearing, which goes right here. And now secure it with the bearing cap. And use M3x6 to fix this. Alright, and this is our housing pre-assembled. Now let's move on. Take the motor mount and two motor mount pins. And these two go into these holes. When finished it should look like this. Now take your brushless motor and the motor coupler. The motor coupler needs to be 18 mm outer diameter or smaller. Bigger diameters than 18 mm will not fit into the motor mount. Secure your motor coupler to your motor. Now take two M3x10s and four M3x30s and use it to secure your motor to the motor mount. Now let's prepare the steering servo. You will need a standard size steering servo and a circular servo arm. I will also prepare my servo coupler and two M2 by 10s. And I will drill two of these holes against each other with a 2 mm bit. Secure the servo arm to the servo coupler and leave there a 1.5 mm gap between them to compensate for, for any misalignment. Now take your centered servo and align it so that the Threaded insert faces upwards. Ok, and now we are ready to mount this servo onto our motor mount. For this we will use 4 M3x10s with washers. I will also prepare one M3x10 into the servo coupler. We can now slide it into the housing. 
and use two M3 by 25 to fix it. Now let's take our dry shaft and slide it through the bearing into the motor coupler. Slide it all the way inwards to touch with the motor shaft and then pull it one millimeter back to prevent these shafts from touching each other and transferring vibration and secure it in the motor coupler. Now I will take my grease, I am using white lithium grease and put it into the grease port. And I will close the grease port with M3x6. Now let's take the O-rings and insert them into first stage and second stage. Now let's take the second bearing and insert it into the second stage. And once again apply grease into the grease port. And close it with M3 by 6. Now take the M5 by 20 grub screw and screw it into the slot. All the way in. And now we will put all the things together. Take your impeller and slide it onto the shaft. And make sure it is in contact with your bearing right here. It needs to transfer the thrust into the bearing and not into the shaft. Now take your first stage and rotate it so that you are able to slide it over the impeller into correct position. Close it with the second stage and secure everything with four M3 by 45 mm screws. Now we will do the steering assembly. So take the steering crank and press fit the steering shaft into it, having the flat plate in the correct orientation. And finish this with the steering pin. OK. Now slide the steering shaft into the pump and secure it in the servo coupler using the M3 by 10. Now you can finish the steering assembly with the nozzle of your choice. I am using the 10 degree upwards one. Use the M5 washer and the M5 locking nut. Don't fully tighten the nut because the nozzle needs to move freely. The last step is to take the intake grate and the right plate and fix them in the bottom of the pump. This time using the M3x6 flathead screws. And the right plate. And that's it. This is the MJ35 finished. You can now connect the water cooling and test the pump in a pool to make sure it is working properly. Then you can follow my steps in the MJ35 installation video, which I will link in the description to install your pump. Thanks for watching this one. If you have any questions regarding the MJ35 or any other MJ design, feel free to ask in the comments or in the official MJ Facebook group, which I will link in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you.